NASA astronaut Scott Kelly spent almost one year orbiting Earth aboard the International Space Station, while his identical twin brother, Mark Kelly, who is also an astronaut, spent that same time here on Earth. This gave NASA the unique opportunity to study the impact of long-term space travel on human biology. To find out more, we talked to one of the study's lead authors, Dr. Francine Garrett Bakelman. You know, it's rare to have twins, <laughs> and it's even rarer to have twins that are both astronauts, right? I mean, that's unheard of. NASA and, and really Scott Kelly came up with this concept that it would be really great to do this research project and study the effects of long-term space flight on not only physiological parameters that NASA really studies heavily and has been for many, many decades, but to really expand that um, to include molecular information and some additional parameters that might be important for long-term space travel, using his uh, brother as a control, as a reference, because they're genetically identical. Scott Kelly collected biological samples like blood and urine while he was in space. And at the same time, his brother Mark Kelly was on Earth, collecting the exact same kinds of samples. So describe to me one of the more high-stakes scenarios that you were involved in personally, receiving a, a, a high-priority sample, having yeah. to process it, at, you know, right then. Are you up yeah. first, like, are you up at like 2 o'clock in the morning? What's going on? If you recall, he landed around midnight. Two, there were actually two specimens coming in. One was collected on the space station right before he left and came down with him. The second one was planned to be collected from him when he got to the Johnson Space Center. You know, I got these two specimens at like two o'clock in the morning, 2.30 in the morning. And uh, I was in the lab till around eight, nine o'clock in the morning working continuously, you know, and that was, um, that was a big responsibility. Because <laughs> yeah. if I would have made a mistake that night, <laughs> The results would have been different. But that was really, um, I would say for me, that was kind of a highlight experience because in science, you don't routinely get to experience something like that, right? If you're working with something in the laboratory, usually you can get more material. Not always, but usually. Um, and it's not like you get a, one or two tubes and, and it's, your, it's your one shot, right? You can't reproduce this. <laughs> no, you can't. It's like how? Like when is the next time you're gonna have? When is the next time you're gonna get like twins? Yeah. That's just not gonna work, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so that was kind of unique, I have to say. Let's talk about the biggest takeaways from what you found, because you were looking at a lot of stuff, right? You're a looking at stuff. you're looking at uh, epigenetics. You're looking at genetic expression. You're also looking at microbiome stuff. You're looking at yeah. cognitive function. So you covered a lot of territory. Right. Let's talk about what the biggest takeaways were. Preliminarily, there's a strong suggestion that human biology can be maintained at the cellular level, not just physiological level, and that that will really facilitate long-term travel and safety for astronauts long-term. Um, I would say the next most important findings were the telomere caps. The telomeres, the caps of the chromosomes, got longer in spaceflight. That was unexpected. The telomeres are really these, these caps that sit on the edges of chromosomes, and, and they protect our genetic material from becoming damaged. And every test we did basically showed the same result, that the telomeres got longer with flight, and within two days of him coming back, they shrunk down to where they were. The next um, finding, which I was uh, involved with, was the gene expression data. There was a lot of uh, gene changes in inflammation and stress response as we, as we expected to see, I would have been shocked if there weren't. Gene expression refers to whether a section of your DNA is turned on or off. Some genes control for fixed traits, like eye color. But others, like the ones that help regulate your metabolism, are turning off and on all the time. I mean, the thing people need to remember, right, is like gene expression changes in response to everything. Yeah. Every day, every hour. Right. Every day, every hour. And so it would have been shocking if we saw nothing. He had gene expression changes that were correlated with the time that he was in space. And after he came back, the vast majority of those, greater than 90%, came back to where they were before flight by the six-month mark after he returned. 
who knows if we would have measured that a year late like a year after return maybe that number would be much higher 95 96 97 two years later maybe everything is back to normal we just don't know the answer to that we already know that space travel is rough on humans for instance it can interfere with the movement of fluids in the body because there's no gravity they can accumulate in the head and this can have a number of side effects up to 40 percent of astronauts have lasting vision problems but this study is the beginning of understanding more about what happens to the human body in space. It points the way towards uh, questions that you know, NASA or other space agencies might ask about what kind of protective measures can we take when we're sending people to space. Right? Exactly. We already know that in right. microgravity you lose muscle mass, you lose bone density, right. and they've developed sort of exercise regimens to counteract right. that, right? But right. Like, maybe there's a pill we could take in the future that could help with some of these. Absolutely. Absolutely. Time will tell. What, if any, are the implications of these findings for longer duration space missions? People yeah. talk about a mission to Mars, right? And a flyby mission to Mars, not even touching down, yeah. going around, coming home, that's 500 days. I think it gives us some perspective and direction of the areas in molecular biology that should be focused on and should be studied further. Um, but the first step to this will be to basically reproduce the study in additional astronauts who will be on the International Space Station for a year. And then as the space agencies start traveling further out, the same studies will have to be repeated to see if these things are reproducible. Because it could be that this is an N of 1 and it's an N of 1 and we will never see this again. Right, it could, be that, it could be that Scott is just particularly resistant to the ravages of space, right? Correct. Yeah. One, one thing to keep in mind though, is that when the astronauts are on the International Space Station, they have a very strict diet and a very strict exercise regimen. And so it could be that what we detected was actually a consequence of this lifestyle change. They might be living healthier lives in space than, than, yes. than, than Mark right. was on Earth. And he is a Caucasian male. If it's a African-American male, a woman, who knows if these will be reproducible. And so we have to be careful with what we think and what we say because it's really hard to tell what the implications are. But I think at the end of the day, the study was informative. It gives insight into the potential... Uh, molecular mechanisms that might be affected by, state, by space flight, and they can give direction uh, for countermeasures to be considered and additional studies to be done in the future. Hey, thank okay. you again so much for joining us. Thanks for the opportunity to chat today.